Do you have anything to say for yourself, Blitz? <laughs> he's so contemplating, chewing it up, biting yeah, this. He's furry like, thing. I'm about to whisper to that mic. Speak. 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 Oh Speak. 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 <laughs> Good boy. High five. That doesn't mean you get it. Can you whisper? Matt and Becca. Yay. What's wrong? I was just like sniffling the whole time. And the whole podcast is just going to be us be like. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca got me sick, guys. It's true. Super spreader. It's true. Super Dude, spreader. Um, another person just texted me that I've personal trained that they need to cancel. Oh. So. It's not bad sick. It's like cold stuff. No, it's just sinusy. So you guys throat. get the little sore throat. The sexy raspity voice raspity. voice. Isn't that how you say it? Raspy. Ra rasp rasp no, raspy. raspy. There's no it e in it. <laughs> Bohemian <laughs> rhapsody voice. <laughs> what does that even mean? But anyways, that's why at least I sound different. Do you sound different? I don't think you sound. Different. I felt like I did yesterday. I'm sorry for all the sniffling. Know. I'll probably sneeze 5,000 times, too. I've never sneezed so much in my life. I have. Yeah, we all know you have. You have the most insane sneezing fits. Blitz, what's up, man? You got to relax, dude. Blitz you has had a good week. Today? You got to deal with it. He did some fun stuff. Yeah. Besides being sick for, like, two weeks in a row. He got fan mail. Did we talk about that last week with his fan mail? When did we open that? I think we opened it on Friday, so no. Yeah. It's got some fan mail. Shout out to <coughs> Pete. 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 Pete sent Blitz some very nice bones. Maybe we should eat a bone today. Yeah. And some cookies from Three Dog Bakery, which is legit, buddy. Those smell good all the time. What is this? Episode 25? 25. Wow. We're a quarter of the way to a hundred. What are we even gonna do think if, if we ever think get if we to did two a week? We bring that up every so time. Fast. If you learn to edit the podcast, we can knock out two. But I think we should save your beautiful face so people can only see it once a week. There'll be more quantity over or quality, quality over, over quantity. One matte face per week. Right. Okay. Let's kick off episode 25 of the No Regrets Podcast. It's your team right here. I'm Becca, that's Matt, and that's Blitz. We are going to do something a little bit different this week, and I didn't even tell you the reason why. I said prepare for in honor of Wadapalooza coming up in just a few weeks and going compete in Miami. Hopefully it's better than this weather right here. It's raining outside. It's gloomy. It's cold. It's better than last year, too. Last year with the random cold front that came through in Miami. In honor of Wadapalooza coming up real soon, what we're going to do is take you through last year's events and memories. And I didn't write down any notes for this. I just wrote down the events, so I, I didn't even remember half the events. And then I was like, oh, I do remember doing that. Oh, I do remember doing that. And then we're going to walk through good memories, how they went, how we can improve, and then talk about how excited we are and what we're hoping to see this time around come Wadapalooza 2024. Cool? Let's do other, it. There was one other thing. That, oh, I was going to tell you why. Don't I, get eaten by a shark. I was going to tell you why. I, do <laughs> sharks even swim that close to... Don't think about that. I'm not, I'm not afraid of the shark. This, you just got to be the faster swimmer, right? Yeah. Don't be the slowest. Yeah, just don't be the don't slowest. Be last. So we'll get to that here in a second. But the reason I kind of made this decision is I thought this would be a cool, unique episode. But also, I put questions out on Instagram like I normally do for you guys to ask any and all the questions that you want. You can also ask us long form questions at getthatfusednews at gmail.com. But all of the questions that we got this week, it's probably the first week I was like, ugh. We've either answered most of these or they're just the classic, what's your bench press? What's your deadlift? How old are you? 
will you go out on a date with me? <laughs> it was just all of that. So I was like, you know what? That's our sign to do a little bit different episode, have some fun talking through some events, talking through some CrossFit, and uh, talking through how hopefully our training is paying off and we get to show it, show off a little bit in Miami. Anything to add to that before we get into it? Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna pull it up. Do you remember what the first event was last year? Yes, the muscle ups and squats. <laughs> How could we forget it? That was, so event one of Wadapalooza. I didn't write down the names of the events because they always try to get creative with the names and no one ever remembers that. But it was 15, 12, nine ring muscle ups with 21 back squats, 15 front squats, and nine overhead squats in between. So basically, it was a 15-12-9 and a 21-15-9. As you got to the smaller reps, the squats got harder. The barbell was 165, and I was super excited to get into this workout. This is actually a little bit up my alley, which surprised some people, just being that the barbell was a little bit heavier. I talked to a lot of people afterwards and a lot of people were just shocked. They were like, wow, you move that barbell so well. I was a little bit offended by that too. I was like, that's what I really haven't gotten to show, I feel like, in the most recent years of competing is one of my strengths is actually moving moderate barbells. We just don't- Moderate heavy barbells. Moderate, and moderate heavy. Something above like the normal Fran weight or open weight and everything. I like to actually have a little bit of weight because that allows me to showcase a little bit of technique and stay efficient yeah. moving those. You made a post this week <coughs> about um, trying to drive me crazy on percentages and rep schemes. Like, yes, I know what it is about. really, it is really amazing. Like, as coaches or programmers, we there's different things you can do to calculate a one rep max or, hey, if they're doing 85%, they can get, you know, and everyone, every athlete's a little bit different, but you can kind of guesstimate what rep scheme, rep, what reps, how many reps they can get at that percentage. And she just <coughs> blows that out of, um, she can do 90% for several reps. I don't and know so if there's, that's a good or a bad Well, thing. that's, that's why we've tried to work on absolute strength because that's where we need to need improvement, but it's also a very high or very um, big strength of yours to, to to have that kind of strength endurance to be able to move 85% like a ball. Oh, that, well, that was my thought. When you were talking about that, I was kind of thinking, and I've thought of this a lot because if you guys keep up with my Instagram stories or anything, you'll notice the strength work that I do is pretty wild and, and out there like not traditional crossfit not the normal i do olympic lift but not a whole ton of olympic lifts we're doing a lot of squatting and pulling of different types and everything and it feels really crazy and i'm like how many athletes out there are in this position where they need to train very similar to how i'm training right now do you think there's a lot in the field I mean, there's some. Like, for sure. my one rep max top end strength is such a big hole. Yeah. That's just plain and simple where I get shot down. And it's so big that we've had some people um, weigh in a little bit on their thoughts of just like, maybe Becca should just bank on her gymnastic strength and bank on her strengths that she already has. But the, the reality is, is that is such a big hole for me is that if I don't fill it in, I'll always be this hit or miss competitor, which I don't yeah. want to be. And just uh, with the new <coughs> format too this year with a bigger field and quarterfinals and how that, that just becomes even more important to build that that absolute strength because there's- Fill in that hole because- Because there's more people that can get in between and then obviously there's a bunch of people that will post lifts that will never be confirmed or that's Not so. don't sugarcoat this. This is what we actually need to talk about. A lot of people were asking us when they first announced the new structure of the upcoming season is how do you feel about the 25% being invited to quarterfinals and what does that do? They're taking less spots to to semifinals and what does that do for us and our thoughts? What are our opinions on that? And plain and simple, for someone like me, it's it sucks. Well, it just depends on what for, the program. Well, for everyone, if you have a hole like that, it, it depends it, on the programming. 
but there's always a there's almost always a single modality weightlifting event. Yes. That's in a sport event. Yes. And here's the the sucky part. I mean, last year that. the cool thing was that the heavy thing was the the clean and jerk. Yes. And, if they keep and it box jump over, if so they you were keep able to do really well in a that. workout, which in my opinion, we're not Olympic weightlifters. Where there are ways to test strength in the form of CrossFit and fitness, like how they did in corner finals last year. Yeah. Actually, did that, pretty well. If they in do that, that then that's that's and it's perfectly. They're taking fine. that into account. So it's that's good. when you can plain and simple look at my my open years. The years there was only one open year, right, so far that didn't have a one rep max in it, and that was. 2022, the year we made it to the games? Was that 2021? I don't know. Anyway, that was my best open finish because regardless, if they put a one rep max in there, there are people that are way, way, way less fit that are going to get in between a lot of even the top games athletes because they're better at top end strength versus all around fitness. It's not just that. There's obviously that component, but it's that everybody is going to try – like so many more people are going to attempt the one rep max, especially the people that are good at lifting. And then when it gets to the 33, 27, when 21, to 15, chest to bar and uh, thrusters, so many people are not going to do it, quit in the middle of it, or just kind of get You think they won't it. even put a score in for that? And that, that'll, oh, sway, sure. that'll sway the leaderboard? For sure. That's There's, so ridiculous. I mean, it's just like All the right. first workout. We're, we're already off topic in this podcast Sorry, and making guys. me mad. Um, no, it's not bad. But the whole point is, as long as they take that into account with the programming and everything else, it can totally be fine. But it is something where we have to look at it as we have to like <coughs> constantly we have to fill in that hole. Be be working for the absolute strength, even if we can't. We have to spend time on that because that's the biggest the big, biggest obstacle to moving along the season. So. Yes. And here's the more positive side of it is I love everything that we're doing and I have confidence in what we're doing in that if we just get those what they, my one rep maxes will never be top tier competitive just because of my stature and my size. But if we can just raise those numbers up a little bit, there comes the 80 percent, 90 percent that we're really already really good at. And those numbers get a little bit higher. Um, and everybody kind of asks being that gymnastics is my strength because of my size, they're like, hey, what happens if you put on more weight and that gymnastics starts to suffer a little bit? My gymnastics is so far on the other end, and I will never be he that heavy to where that side of it's going to suffer that bad. So I have confidence in what we're doing. But anyways, back to that event. Being that the barbell was 165, and I do like to squat. I do love me a good squat workout. That workout... Went okay. I was really unhappy overall with my finish, but moving a 165 bar was cool. What happened before that, it being the first event, if you've ever competed, especially at when, if you're any of you guys out there are competing at some top levels, or when you get into that first event, you always have the jitters and you have extra nerves and you just got to go dump it out all on the floor on the first event. But we had just come from a hard days of travel, like our flight was pushed all the way to the evening. We had we weren't even in Miami for like 24 hours, right, before we no. hopped on the floor? No. Yeah, and <clears throat> I could definitely feel that. I was gassed the whole way. I felt like my heart rate was out of control on something like ring muscle-ups. You got and some bad no reps, too. I got some unfortunate no reps, which is the game. Um, and... Miami is known for, I think, the hardest ring muscle-ups because those rings are like swinging out by the bay, the wind's blowing. They decided to put heavy chains on them to stop them from blowing, and it was like doing a weighted muscle-up. But it was. But it everyone's, did, everyone's on the same. That's what. Field. That's and when what, I say bad no reps, I don't want to come off as like I'm complaining. <clears throat> like she got called for her toes coming above the rings but it was after the transition. It's when you're sitting up and your feet pop up as you're sitting up over that. It's not, you don't, that's different than your toes coming above the rings prior to the transition. And it was just something where the judge, or I, <coughs> unless she was saying, I don't know, that's what I saw her calling, but. Yeah, she was calling that. Anyways. 
um, There's a from what I remember. But the coolest thing, once you kind of get into competing more and when you grow as a competitor, that's one of the things I'm most proud of is being able to adapt on the spot and be like, everybody has to deal with this situation of the rings blowing around, the rings feeling really, really weird. It's just who can adapt the fastest and the, we and the, and the best. And ultimately, um, the person that's probably best at muscle-ups adapts the best to the different situations. I'm just talking about anything. Yeah, but I'm just anything saying, like, else. it's still showing the person who's best at the movement. Yeah. But that's where most, I'm most proud most of, of to be a, um, a more seasoned competitor versus being like, ah, this doesn't feel like in training. Because when you get out on the competition floor, you will, it never feels like training. It never, the equipment always feels different, uh, and you just got to learn to deal with it because everybody's dealing with it. Cool. That was the start. Oh, after that event, I was, like, bent over. I was, like, hiding in the corner of, like, a little tent, and then I think I've shared this story before. I was so embarrassed because I was so, my heart rate was so out of control, and I was kind of frustrated from not finishing that event because I knew I could finish it. But I was, like, bent over and, like, trying to, like, hide in the little corner of the tent while I caught my breath. And then some fans were like, Becca, can we get a picture? And I was like, wait. It was just, like, the first event. I was like, I can't breathe. <laughs> it was so embarrassing, but that kicked off a lot of Palooza. Event two. This is one we did good in. Four legless rope climbs, 40 weighted GHD sit-ups, 30-meter double kettlebell Overhead walking lunge with 35s, 20 double kettlebell hang clean and jerks, a mile run, 20 double kettlebell thrusters, 30 meter double front rack lunge, and 40 GHG sit ups, five regular rope climbs. Big ol' down and back chipper. I liked this one. Um, another thing when it goes to adapting mid workout and everything. What, I mean, we compete at an elite level where most of the elites have seen movements like thrusters, GHD sit-ups. Like, there's hard standards on that that we use all throughout the season and everything. But when we got to over there, they gave us a new standard on the GHD sit-ups with the medicine ball. The medicine ball could not roll up your legs. And everybody who's done weighted GHD sit-ups before knows that technique of tuck it in and roll it down your legs and everything. And that changed this workout luckily i'm pretty confident in ghds but it played into your grip it was a factor on your grip and just being that it was such a long workout i was really proud because i love long workouts like this i wouldn't say they're necessarily my stronger workouts i'm usually pretty hot in the 12 to like 15 minute range but this one being that it was 22 um and being longer i was pretty proud of our finish i think we finished like sixth on, oh, on event one, I think we finished 12th. And then this one was 6th, I believe. But the mile assault run felt like an eternity. Matt tried to distract me. Especially when you're just staring at a crowd. I know. You're like literally this close to people in front of you. And it on the assault runner, it's longer than a mile. It was, I think I ran an eight-minute mile then which sounds super slow, but that's how slow the, the, the runners are, and that's mid-workout. And then there's people, like, sitting right in front of you. Matt tried to, like, flag me down he, to help me with my kettlebell technique. And I was like, don't distract me while I'm on this runner. Everybody knows you can fall off these things. But this was a super fun one. Um, all, I remember doing the clean and jerks and just sucking wind on the clean and jerks because we had to do like lunges, but this trip was so short and you were like holding yeah. the kettlebells for so long. And then I was just sucking wind on the clean and jerks. The good thing about it is, and I was so surprised, like my jam was actually on the back half of the workout thrusters with those kettlebells and then actually a front rack lunge. It felt so much easier than the, than the trip forward. So that's where I think I got like a second wind. I was like, Oh, we could do this. Yeah. I think yeah, it's just, an excellent job of pacing it and realizing the workout was really the back half of it. <coughs> um, the other funny story about that one is you come off of GHD sit-ups and pop quiz, guys. 
GHG sit-ups are obviously sit-ups that are your abs, but if you are getting trying to be pretty efficient with your sit-up, you'll also know that you use your quads or extend your quads really hard, especially when your midline starts to go. Uh, when I got to the final five rope climbs, my quads were shot after the thrusters and lunges and the GHG sit-ups, and I thought I was jumping so high up that rope, and <laughs> I probably just should have, like, stretched tall because you were, like, you jumped, like, went down. <laughs> Oh, that was a funny story. But yeah, I liked that one. And it was kind of a little bit, I was frustrated after event one, so I went out there pretty angry for the, that event. Yeah? Yeah, good. On to event three and four. So at Wadapalooza, guys, I compete individual, and I'll do the same thing this year. Uh, you have the option to compete individual and then possibly team if you push put together a team for the for Saturday and Sunday but we'll just compete Thursday Friday so they kind of pack in some two-part events and this was event three and four part a was four time you did 11 22 11 toes to bar hurdle jumps in 44 yard shuttle runs um, that was super confusing out there because there's so many lines on the ground we rested one minute and then part B was a thousand meter row 20 D ball cleans in a 300 foot d-ball bear hug carry this one was the first event that i've that i did on under the miami night lights it was super cool um the energy is insane on the floor looking that forward to that again such a sprint that it was yeah and i liked it when we tested it in here because we tested that one straight through because it's a sprint toes to bar and hurdle jumps turns out those two clash together that's probably why they put them together because you do those toes to bar really fast and your abs go and then you try to hurdle jump over something. And I have to say, I've gotten better at those. I was not confident in those. No, you didn't like that. No, I was not confident in those hurdle jumps and I did have a miss on, on one or two. I can't even remember. We didn't finish too bad on that one, but it definitely could have been a cleaner run being that I like toes to bar. But yeah, when your nerves are up, people are yelling, you're sprinting out there. That one was like super, super. Well, that, I mean that fast. that is a cool thing about that fast workout is we definitely could have done better, but it really kind of highlights the precision in those hurdle jumps and like any mistake. These are the scariest costs workouts. You, uh, cost you spots. Yeah. Cost you, cost you, you know. So these are the scariest workouts to go and do. Those fast sprint ones where a no rep is so costly. Mm -hmm. So once we got past that, even though that was pro the stronger ver the stronger part of the workout for me, event three, event four was a little bit slowed down, being that you had to pace yourself through it. Um, Wadapalooza brings out the assault rowers, and they are different than the concept two rowers. And once again, it's just learning. Like you get on them in the warm up area, and you start trying to find what numbers feel good. And I can't even remember my. I can kind of think about where my pace was. I know it was slower than the normal Concept 2 rower. Um, but even though I think we finished middle of the pack in this one, I was still proud of it because that's that's not a strong workout for me. Uh, I remember getting off the rower way too close to the front, though, and I go, ooh. Did you tell them what the workout was? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. 1,000 meter row, 20 D ball cleans, 300 foot belly carry. Yeah. I mean, you were one of the last people off the rower. I thought I was towards the front. Off I wasn't. The row? I wasn't. No. Okay, good, because that's a problem. <laughs> um, but you did the all the. You're one of the few people that did the D ball. I carry was unbroken. You did the whole thing yeah. unbroken. I've gotten so much better at D ball cleans since then. We've done a lot of. We've done a lot of carrying, holding. Yeah, that's kind of what I do these days. The, is just hold things. The after. After the capital event, just like we're gonna get good at moving things, holding the Husafel as good as we can at moving, holding these odd objects and moving them. I got to hold it for a minute at a time yesterday, just in place, just me and the Husafel, me and my friend. After sled pulls. After sled pulls, but I've gotten so much better at D ball cleans since since this one. I just remember uh, my back was blown up on the D ball cleans. To be expected after you used midline, you rode, and then it's just a lot of D ball cleans to chip through. Uh, but that carry, that was where I was like, I'm going to hang on to this thing until I die. 
and it was like 10 trips back and forth. Way too much counting, way too much spinning in a circle. So I hope Judge even counted right right there. But I remember That's getting one. past halfway on that, and I'm like, if I can get halfway, I'm going to finish this thing. And I was hanging on, adjusted it once, and then started hustling so fast. And then all I remember is my body just, like, trembling. And good thing you didn't have to make it, like, all the way across. You just picked it up wherever you dropped it because I went up to you after and I was like, I totally like, my body failed. I like peed on myself out there on the floor and everything because my body just like failed there. And I had like a trip and a half left. It was funny though. I went to absolute failure on that and I can be proud of that. I probably paid for that's, it in the That's end. definitely a fun one. <coughs> that would be fun to see you do that now versus a year yep. ago. That'd be big improvement. Yeah. I would be I I think I saw that one last year and I hated it. Yeah. Now now I look at that and I'm like that's very doable. Yeah. Especially since we hustle carrying the 150s these days. That one was fun so that wrapped up the first day. And the other good thing about Wadapalooza being only 2 days of competition is you're still significantly trashed after day 1 and especially day 2. So that's plenty. Props to all the people that do individual and go team after. I'm just going to sit back and relax in all of my soreness. Cool. That was day one. Then we went to day two. One rep max clean and jerk for part A. Then we have a two-minute transition. And at minute six, we do a max time freestanding parallel handstand hold. Let's start with the clean and jerk. Okay, so I was already super sore. Very much in my head at that time. Would you like to say something right now? You look like you have something on your mind. This is like every max lift in a competition. I mean, can you blame me? Why don't you go ahead and say your piece? No, I'm just, that's, you, You get very much in your head for every lift, and then you go out there and you perform very well. Don't jinx it. I'd rather it be that way than the other way around. Yeah. But the reason I was having that, I was really not happy about that clean and jerk or really nervous for it is because that's when I had bad tendonitis going on. And I think that we learned that's from excessive amounts of swimming. I was doing way too much swimming because I was really enjoying swimming and like, doing fast swimming, long distance swimming, way too much swimming. And I think I developed a little bit of, they call it swimmer's elbows or also, also golfer's elbow. I was really nervous for that clean and jerk, but I am always a nervous wreck before the one rep maxes. And then when you get out on the floor, you just use all that adrenaline to go hit a good lift. We went three for three, hit a PR. It's adrenaline. And 218. It's, and it's trusting your training and you, that you've done the reps and you're <coughs> gonna go. This this year we got a snatch. This year it gets worse. We have a snatch. That's the really nerve wracking ones. Although, how many times have we competed snatches? Yeah. A lot. Got to do it at semifinals. Got to do it plenty of times before. So we ended up going out there, hitting three for three lifts, hitting 218 on a clean and jerk. That was good enough for a PR for me. The setup, it looks that Tina stage hill is so fun because it's very intimate. Like the whole crowd is up on the grass hill and then the stage is small, so they only put so many of us, like was it like 10 at a time? I think eight. Something like that on the stage, so you get to kind of see everyone. But the barbells were rolling everywhere, making me so nervous. Dude, I can be mid-workout in the gym. Mid-workout and I see a class going on and my eyes just go to all these safety things like that are happening during class. The other day I was like running, people were squatting, there were parallettes too close to the bar and I like, mm, -mm got to go move those. So to see, have that distraction on the competition floor, like people putting plates everywhere, I'm like, oh, just make the lift, just stick the lift and everything will be fine. But that stuff, that was bothering me on that event. But anyways, we made it past it. It was super fun. Everybody knows the one rep maxes are probably the most nerve wracking, but they're the most rewarding. Another thing that fun. happened in the warm up area, I just remembered, and one of the reasons you got what? freaked out was 
they had 55 pound plates. Oh. And I think you did a clean. <coughs> You, you didn't thought, tell me you, you put on 55. No, you thought it was 125 and it was 145. And you were like, oh, no. And you were all Yeah, out. you think that'll then, mess with your head? No. It will. <laughs> and then I was explaining to you. What, Y'all. Explaining okay. to you the weights and then telling you what it was. And you were like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. And you were, aren't trusting my math. No, I was not. I have never seen black 55-pound bumper plates. Usually they're the red competition plates. Yeah. And we were making our plan going That's out there. Happened. Math is hard, especially when you have adrenaline pumping through you. And all you got to do, especially if you're competing with colored plates, is just remember the colors. Like blues on, greens on. And they had the freaking reds sitting Dude, right there. You, I was like, do not touch those red plates. We, the I will mess it up. The first time we go to Europe, you're going to be like. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to have, you know I'm how everybody writes code. on their arms? Just give yeah. you color code. That's all like you got to do. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna do that, and it's probably I'll probably lift better in that sense because you kilos are a little bit heavier. I won't is. know. I'll just, just be like, like okay, I'll do that. It. That was yeah. Imagine warming up. I thought there were forty fives on my bar, which is one twenty five, and there were fifty fives. I'm like, why does why is this so heavy? Oh my gosh, we're well, I'm not gonna be able to lift anything. And you probably jumped from like <coughs> one oh five. You pulled off thirty fives and put on, or. I don't know. That'll you know. mess with your head. Yeah, I do put not touch those. And put on 55s. At, at least for the clean and jerk then, do not touch the red plates. You will screw up all the math. You'll screw up that. After the clean and jerk, then we get to the After I got done with that last clean and jerk, I was like, "Yes, now we can have some fun." But wait. Whenever you have a an event that's in your wheelhouse, People are like, oh, yeah, they're going to crush you. This is going to feel so fun. It puts so much pressure on you. Yeah, but you're excited it to go do so it. It puts so much pressure on you. You're excited. Oh, I was super excited after we got through that clean and jerk. Yeah, I mean. And then a couple of things I remember is, one, after the clean and jerk, I was, like, literally, like, Think about the pressure uh, if it was backwards, if you would have done the handstand hold first and then the clean and jerk. I think that would have been awesome for me. No, it wouldn't have. Why not? Because you did a lot more work than everyone else on the handstand. Oh, hold. that's true. Would have affected your that's jerk true. probably where some people. This is why he's smarter than me. He thinks of those things. I was thinking like more people would be fatigued, but actually so many people mm-hmm. couldn't even kick yeah. up to handstand. They, they don't get shoulder fatigue. They get just. Yeah, that balance. would have been They lose awful. their balance. That would have been awful. But anyways, so I remember just like being all sh- shaken up like from the clean and jerks, like just standing there like. Ugh, and I was like, oh my gosh, what if I miss this kick up? To handstand. That's. I was like, if I can just get the well, kick up. You had up. like ten seconds to get up. If you yeah. missed initially, you could kick back up. Yeah, but you don't want to be flustered, like rushing to kick up. So they gave you ten seconds to get into a handstand hold, and if you didn't, if you weren't up and balanced by that time on the parallettes, your event was up. It's so. It shocked me. So many people couldn't hold a freestanding handstand hold on the parallettes, and if you are familiar with handstand holds and practice them a good bit, which being a gymnast, of course we did, a lot of that, parallettes are actually easier to balance on because you can use your wrist, you can rock a little bit side to side. It's just- it's That's once you have a, um, you have a very good body control and understanding of where you are and able to kind of like lock in your, your positioning. If you're still newer to that, it's easier to be on the ground <coughs> because they can kind of hint when you're in the box handstand walk back and forth a little bit. So when you're like, you're more developed, those nuances do make the the parallettes easier than just being on the ground. But for, it's kind of one of those things that's opposite for a, someone just getting used to holding a handstand. When they allow the wiggle room of the box. Because you can't, it's hard to move your hands on the parallettes. You can move your hands on the box or in a, on the floor in a box. You can use your wrist a lot more on the parallettes. Right. Um, the other thing I remember is I did not practice any of those holds with weightlifting shoes on. And I was like, these things are heavy. And it just, I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to like handstand holds and can feel a lot of things. And I was like, these things are so heavy. Like any little movement is like teeter tottering us back and forth. But that was the big first pro event win so that was super exciting 
Um, there was one other thing I wanted. Oh, I wanted to talk about what? What? I wanted to talk about why we'd do a stagger hold instead oh, of having okay. feet together. I saw a picture of a lot of the guys didn't do that, probably because they can't split, but... Uh, I see people trying all different things when it comes to handstand walking and all these different handstand tricks of what to do with your feet. If you have ever watched any of my handstand tutorial videos, one of the things I say the most is wherever your feet go, your body goes. So if you're walking, if you're doing a classic forward handstand walk, that's why people bend their knees or have their feet leaning because wherever your feet are going, your body's gonna follow. So the reason we used a stagger like that is you can just feel a lot of the teeter tottering back and forth. And it's like almost like a split jerk in a sense is like you can have more wiggle room and be able to balance out. It's like, what would you call that? Like one of those, just like a scale, scale or something, yeah. just back and forth. Um, but then after that event went, it was so funny. I'd get tagged in so many like handstand walk videos of people trying to walk in a staggered stance. And I'm like, no, 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 that's just for holding because you want to have one foot on either side of you so you can balance. Hey guys, we had a full admission this week from Rebecca that I could beat her in a handstand sprint. I ain't getting in the way of you. <laughs> it's true. He was doing handstand yes. walks and he doesn't bust out handstand walks that often. Talk about a giant leaning <laughs> tower. Do not like I go for it. I was worried for the speaker's life. You were just gonna like keep going. It's a, it's impressive. I don't think I could beat you in a 25 foot race. You got some monster steps too. Heave. Yes, that made my week. <coughs> he keeps bringing it up. All right. Gotta after, take my wins when I can get them. Okay. After an event win, we go to a sucky event. Uh, this is the most disappointing, the most disappointing event of Wadapalooza. Oh yeah. I, not by placement, just I had so much to prove to myself in my swimming and it went horribly. I had been working so hard on my swimming and it was, it did not go well. Four time, or two rounds for time with a 20 minute cap on it, which we, a lot of us got time capped and I was one of them. 50 wall balls with a 20 pound wall ball to nine feet. Open water swim, which I don't know how long that was and then 150 drag rope double unders, which I thought that was a very aggressive double under, drag rope double under count for that workout. Um, for you guys that do know open water swimming out there, you know it's very different than being in a pool. And I do realize that, and we've done a little bit of just lake swimming out at our lake house and everything out at the fam's lake house but i haven't done enough of it to feel absolutely comfortable and every time i've competed swimming in crossfit it's so different when you do wall balls and your heart rate spiked and then you just go jump in and it's i panicked on the first round i could not get my rhythm going for anything i was having to keep my head above water and then the most frustrating part is the second round through i felt so comfortable I was just cruising. I was like, where was that in the first round? I was so frustrated, so disappointed, just because I have worked on my swimming so much. So if you followed my stories, you would know that I put it out there. I was like, one of my goals in Miami this year is to really be comfortable and settle in really fast in the water, just because I feel like it just takes too long for me to settle in. I'm usually like good once we get going. But I was so frustrated after that. But that's not, why we that's why we choose to do something like Wadapalooza because you're gonna do an event like that that kind of exposes, okay, I'm it's kinda of like a runner. There's runners in here that are people that come into CrossFit and they're like great at running or something. Or they, they're they're used to like running their miles, but then you have them do thrusters and burpees and then run and it's totally different. And just continuing to get time in the pool and in open water to be relaxed in it yeah. you can be relaxed when you're just doing it as a single modality thing but the next level is hey uh, getting my heart rate super spiked being in a competitive field with other people swimming and being able to be like relaxed yeah. and that just comes from reps so yeah and that's kind of like you feeling so comfortable upside down 
that's like kind of the swimmers can be out there swimming and be like, this is my rest. I've done this so many yeah. times. Even I can push the pace or I can chill here. I'm just totally relaxed in that, in that yeah. environment. And it's a good memory to hold on to. I just got done with that event. I was so disappointed in myself. I was like, if there was one thing I really wanted to do, it was do well in that swimming event. And I didn't do that. I was just kind of crushed after that. But then we had one more time to get out on the floor. And this is what the two part event was. It was three rounds of 25 chest bars and 15 bench press, which finished with a 21 calorie echo bike. The bench press was with 50 pound dumbbells, which at that point was rather heavy for us. We've gotten a lot better just because they've been introducing bench press a good bit in the competitive world. We've been working on it. It was low hanging fruit for the longest time for me, just my pressing, upper body pressing strength. And we've definitely been hammering that. My pecs were destroyed at this point from the muscle ups, from I think my arms were tired from the Hanson hold that morning. I just remember being super sore for the bench press and having to break those up a lot. And then I got like like six calories on the echo before getting capped, I think. That one was not really in our wheelhouse because it turned into just a bench press workout. Yeah, but that, that's another example of one now with the I, 50s, you would fly. Yeah, it'd be I mean, a lot and we kind of got pushed because we had 60s <coughs> um, for semifinals. For semifinals, and that ended up when that was first announced, we knew that was going to be a, a hiccup. But you got even over just a little bit. You performed better in that than few weeks. Yeah. Than we expected, and now the, I feel like with the pressing that we've done, pressing 50s in a workout isn't Yeah, we did a workout as... not too, too long ago with the 50s, and I felt really good through yeah. it. Then we had a one-minute rest, and you went into this thing, which I love this workout. It did not go <laughs> right, and it wasn't my fault, and that's frustrating. Usually I'll own up to some things. Maybe if I just didn't put the bar down. I think about that all the time. I'm like, hey, maybe if I just didn't put the bar down, we would have stayed on track. Part B, at 10 minutes, we did 30 bar-facing burpees and 30 unbroken power snatches for every break. You did an additional three bar-facing burpees at 85 pounds. I remember getting to that bar. After the 30 bar-facing burpees, I just know 30 burpees for a lot of people kind of mentally crushes you at that point. I felt really good through the burpees. And then I remember grabbing the barbell and I was like, this feels really good. I'm just going to try to strategically two set this, get well past halfway and then break, do the three burpees that I owe and then go to the finish line. Um, unfortunately, these are some of my favorite structured workouts to do because it really pushes you mentally and physically. Uh, to really try to hang on to the bar, but also be smart and not redline. But my problem with penalty workouts like this when you're competing is your judge can easily lose count because you're like 15, 16, drop it on 17. And now they're like one, two, three on the burpees. And they're like, what, what number of snatches were we on? Because you just got so many numbers in your head. And I think that's what happened. Probably. I want, I want to say that's what happened because we were well into the second set and I was getting close to redlining at that point, but I knew that was how, when I, how I wanted to do that workout. Judge lost count, who knows when, did so many extra reps, had to do another burpee penalty, don't know what was then, going like, three on. Three extra reps afterwards, yeah. Don't know what was going on, I was it was counting, a mess. I was counting and the first thing I asked her, because I could tell she got to 30. Yeah. And the first thing I asked her why he made her, when she dropped it at 30, he was like, okay, do your burpees. And she was like, I did 30. And so yeah. she had to stop for a second. And, and then, then she did hers. And then she was asking him what number he was on. He couldn't give me a straight answer. No, he just, so she started doing snatches again. And she's like, when do I stop? Yeah. And the first thing I said to you, first of all, it's, it was impos really hard to, to, unfortunately, we didn't have video of it because it was, imp it was so packed in the stadium. Like our, our, your dad normally videos it or whatever. We didn't get it, he but the first thing it. we asked was, "Did he know? Did he give you any no reps? Because if he right. didn't give you any no reps, you were obviously done way earlier." Because yeah. I counted thirty reps, so yeah. it was a frustrating. 
That was a frustrating finish very, very, for sure. Very, I it was tried a very to frustrating it in the thing moment. to end the weekend on. Yes, it was pretty crushing because I made a goal that I wanted to get um, near top 10. I was hoping for 12th and, uh, and above, and I realized that mistake that I couldn't control, and they didn't give me, I think they might have given me like two seconds back for because they did say I did like a couple extra snatches, which doesn't account for the, the penalties. Or and asking. Yeah. Trying to figure out where you're um, at after you've done 30 at, reps. So. Having that finish that I should have had would have put me in 12th, and we actually finished Wadapalooza in 16th last year. I was pretty unhappy about that. But overall, it's Wadapalooza, and at least it's it wasn't determining factor for the games or anything. But it was a very frustrating finish. Let's hope none of that happens this year. Yeah. Tip for competitors at semifinals <coughs> or any of that stuff. Video is always have video. Um, obviously, you can't dispute a no rep, whether it was a no rep or not, but if there's something to where Major you like can see that. there was no, rep, no reps and you did extra reps or you, there was a miscounting of reps, you can use that something that you can bring to their attention. When you get into at least the games, at least at this point, they usually have your judge and then the, For sure. the rep counter on, in the back, but... It's just, yeah. For it's something, something like it's that. Something but you want, here's the thing. If it ever happens, you're going to want it. Want when it comes to something like Wadapalooza, yes, it is Wadapalooza. It's its own individual thing. There's a lot of money on the line. You can't, yeah. you can't have mistakes like that. So that's what I'm hoping as far as them improving on the event this year. Uh, more organization through just timing of things and organizing the athletes, but also oh, yeah. organizing the judges. I find the judges have so many divisions to judge that they get confused. Yeah. I There has been, that was something I complained about when, way back when I was a teenager competing there, is my judge didn't know the workout multiple times. Yeah. So, and it's well, just because they're doing so I much I think it's a there. hard job. You're, a lot of them are volunteers, and you get to the end of the weekend, and uh, how, how many events have you judged in a row, and then you're trying, and I'm, yeah, but here's the thing, it's is a mistake for the happens. elites, right, for maybe sure. we should have a, 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 a certain a set of judges, judges that, yeah only judge the elite so they don't get worn out. I mean, yeah. it is the last little bit of the day, and I do realize it gets very tiring out there, but when there's money on the line, you can't It's just like anything. It's, yeah. Especially when it was a sanctional, too. Yeah. Anyways, sorry to end it on a but frustrating some... note, but we did finish on a frustrating note. Anyways, that, but they, they've announced a few of the workouts. How do you feel about the workouts so far? Uh, they have announced uh, three events, one being the lift, which was snap, very similar to what we did in the qualifier, which I have mixed feelings on, but it's a snatch. Who doesn't love throwing up a heavy snatch mid-competition? And then I do like the two events that they put out there. I like they put out a weird, oddly structured one that we're going to test, and I'm kind of excited for, because it's like a list a chipper list of things to do and you do three minutes to get as far as you can through it five minutes to get as far as you can through it and then do the whole thing for time very unique workout and that's where i actually enjoy wadapalooza i think they try to come up with very unique crossfit it's one of the more crossfitty events out there agreed yeah i'm excited for it they announced two couplets back-to-back -back couplets which we get to show off some barbell cycling and a little bit of gymnastics. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We got a few weeks to get past the sickness. Well, I should have wore the, <coughs> the uh, Blitz Bolt uh, Miami shirt. Yeah, you should have. You should have. I was wearing my shirt. Mine's dirty. A little bit different podcast episode. Oh, we didn't even give a shout out to Resin. Hey, Resin peeps. This podcast is always sponsored by resin and hydration and caffeine and all that cool stuff. Jen did leave us with a question, though, after all. She all right. texted it to me this morning. Hope you guys enjoyed our Wadapalooza recap. And I hope it gets you fired up. It gets me fired up to go compete here in the, Miami. The most fun thing about that is, like, looking back on all those is seeing, seeing your progress in certain things. And um, that makes me excited to go compete. And show, For sure. show those improvements. For sure. Me too. Um, I totally sent this to myself. Oh, no. Oh, here it is. 
Got it. Um, oh, the last thing I'll say about Wadapalooza is one of the coolest things we get to do when we're all done competing is meet all of you guys out in Vendor Village. It's the coolest event where you can get really up close and personal with everyone. You'll see a lot of the big games athletes actually just walking around in Vendor Village and everything, and it's such a vibe. It's so cool. I had a Come lot of fun. Come say hi. I had a lot of say fun Say hi last on year. Saturday. Yep. Looking forward to it. Now it's time for Coach Jen's question of the week. <laughs> He's back for the kazoos. Here we go. If you lost all of your possessions but one, what would you want it to be? She gives us some deep questions. Like, is, that's scary. Is Blitz my I, don't, I, have a lot. I was thinking Blitz, but I, don't, I think Blitz, we're, don't we're, count. we're, we're like okay. A, like, the fam is okay. Something in the house or. Of all my possessions. I mean, shouldn't it be something that's like practical, like paperwork or something that you're supposed to grab that shouldn't be. I'm thinking about like a house fire or something. If the house was on fire, what would you go grab? I was thinking of my ring. Yeah. I'm such a hoarder too, though. There's so many like little things that shouldn't mean a whole lot to me, but they do. I mean, I would like be the practical so thing would be like my wallet or my laptop or my phone or something that I can immediately get my life back on track. If yeah, I'm, I don't if I think it's it. a laptop. I don't think it's any technology. But if me. it's like something that is sentimental or something that I love that I wouldn't want to lose, I don't know. That's a good answer. Wedding ring. Your wedding ring is like... Well, it's, it's a little bit different than... It's not... Yours is... Yeah, yeah. it's not that. <laughs> um, I feel like I'd have to go grab that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Is there any, like, paperwork we need to go grab? No. Hmm. It goes back to the practical side. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Are there any... Hmm. That's a scary thought. Like don't, a house fire. Uh, I can't think of, I don't like. Jeez, Jen, this is getting dark. We're not like, we don't have a lot of like, we're not. We just we ordered a whole a bunch of, of gym equipment. You just grab a dumbbell and then run. I got it. I got it. I'm trying to think of like what possessions we have that are like, we don't have a lot of. Blitz's stuff. toys. We don't buy a lot of stuff. We've been doing terrible with Jen's questions. She's been. This is a great question. Okay, okay. My, my wedding ring, of course. Our vows on our wall. Mine's literally in a Google Doc. So <laughs> yours, yours is handwritten. Mine's handwritten. Yours is handwritten. And I That's love that. Years. We have like our vows hanging next to each other in a picture from uh, our wedding. And that. Matt's is scribbled on paper and has like things crossed out <laughs> and everything. And it's so, I love it so much. And then mine's like typed out. At the top, it's titled Rebecca's Vows. <laughs> and then it's like organized on the way down. It's funny. It looks like us. Not that you're unorganized or anything, but it was definitely well, I like your handwritten. To write stuff. Even sometimes yeah. I program a lot in the spreadsheets, but sometimes I like to just get out a whiteboard or write get out paper. And All right, my answer is a wedding ring. My air fryer. I love my air fryer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there. <coughs> You, Can't dude, live without my air fryer. Dude, yeah, if there's one thing we use the most in the house, it's that. Love it. No, it's not even just, it's not like a normal air fryer, guys. Like my Rick salsa. <laughs> now this is getting, forget the vows. Get the salsa. Um, this is not a normal, like, air fryer. It's an air It's a ninja toaster. It's the air ninja, fryer, toaster. Yeah. It's a pretty fancy Boiler, it does like a bunch of different stuff. The coffee, grab the coffee. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for listening to a little bit different episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in Miami very, very soon. Have a Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We had the green Ooh, and the yeah. red. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on IG and Last everywhere else. Last podcast of the year next week. we got to make it a good one. Yeah. See you guys later. Peace out.